I would like to know how much Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you. Thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon each and every one of us. Thank you, dear Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way with a reasonable portion of our life, health, and strength. Yes. Father, I ask you to be with us as we listen and hear what is being said to us. Lord, help us to make decisions that are going to be pleasing and right in thy sight and for the town of Silver City. Lord, these and other blessings I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are joining us in the Life of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Great, if you will lead us in our mission statement. Town of Star City mission statement to advance the framework for success through balanced governance, dynamic partnerships, and an engaged community. Commissioner Brown, in the absence of Mayor Pro Tem family, would you read us lead us in our business state? Sauter City is a safe, prosperous, and vibrant community. Where diversity, innovation, and education drive success in a globally competitive society. Thank you both. Thank you all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, Mayor. We have one adjustment, and that is going to be in your packet. Or is section 4.2, Schedule C, on page 2 of 21, and you have the amended, corrected, we changed town to Wolf Speed Town to Innovative Construction Group. Okay, thank you. Motion to approve the amendment. Second. It's been moved and properly second on the paper. Let it be known by sign of our. All opposed have the same right. 
Motion carry. I move that we approve the agenda. Sorry. It's been moved and by a second that the agenda be approved with the necessary amendments. All in favor by sign by. Uh, All opposed have the same right. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Moving right along, we have a presentation. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to get started. I'm watching the jurors. So that's for a National Public Works Week proclamation, Mayor. Yes, sir. For the board to consider. Uh, that's that's pretty much the presentation. It's uh, something that was shared from to me from uh, one of our engineering firms. Said this is something that's coming up, and I wanted to see if the board wanted to consider that for, for the mayor's consideration. Comments, um, questions. <laughs> Does that require uh, anything but a consent? I would say you'd probably want to take a motion. Okay. That's the question. I move that we accept the uh, proclamation, National Public Works Week proclamation, um, May 19th through 25th. Yes, 2024. Yes, Second, all in favor, let it be known by a sign of All of us have the same right. Hearing none, motion carried. I'll be hearing. Has everyone signed up? No one signed up for either public hearing. Okay. Four point one annexing uh, the petition for the campsite. So this kind of ties along with the innovative construction group. So this is in order for us to move forward with the incentive agreement. Um, the land has to be incorporated into the city limits by annexation. So these, this is already part of the campsite, but these particular parcels have not been annexed yet. So at the last meeting, you you all gave the clerk permission to start moving ahead with her findings. And so my findings were favorable for the um, annexation. And you can see the tax revenue gain um, is $3,812.46 for the current land value. That is raw land, no improvements. So that will increase as, um, you know, things are being built. So we have a fire tax revenue loss of $847.21 with a total revenue gain of $2,965.25. And so the service impacts, the fire department will have no additional impacts because they're already in our central fire district, parks and rec, planning, and parks and rec, there will be no additional burden. Planning department, code enforcement of town's code of ordinances, public nuisances, abandoned nuisance, junk motor vehicles, and abandoned structures. They're already in our ETJ right now. Um, so with them being in our city limits, then again, and Jack can kind of help explain that a little more. We'll have more, you know, can send code violations and so forth and so on. Um, police department, this annexation will increase routine patrol, crime prevention, and calls for services, which will require additional staffing, training, and equipment, including vehicles. Um, public works, this will not add any additional burden to the public works department. The public utilities, um, Chris, what did we... Can you help me out on the public utilities for the project ice? I mean, the, um, the sewer. Yeah, I can't remember. 4,000. 4, 4, 4, so 4,000 gallons there, and that's already been allocated. Okay. So um, after the board, if they determine the findings of sufficiency, then you may may elect to schedule a public hearing on June 17th, 2024 to receive public comment or the Board of Commissioners may also take no action on this petition. 
Staff is recommending the annexation of these properties. Therefore, the Board of Commissioners would approve the resolution setting the public hearing date. Do you have any questions? Any questions coming from the board about this particular uh, item? Excuse me, just out of curiosity, what causes the fire tax revenue loss? John, can you explain? Uh, that? If you live in city limits, you don't pay a fire tax, but people right outside city limits, they're frequently in the fire tax. Mm -hmm. So we will, when we annex them, they'll become in the city limits, so we lose that tax. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, will we receive tax dollars from the box that they manufacture there, John? Uh, manu uh, they sell. Uh, it's no, part of the uh, sales tax that's levied, or no? It's uh, like say they make widgets and they sell the widgets all to somewhere in Pennsylvania. Right, they have to be sales. They have to be bought in Sauer City to get these. Yeah, it would have to be bought in Ch Chatham County for it to become Sauer City sales tax. Okay. Right. okay, thank you for that. Any other questions or concerns? You want a motion? Yes. I make a motion that we approve the resolution setting a public hearing date on what's the date? June 17th, 2024. Second. So we we'll the probably second that we uh, approve the resolution and set the hearing date. All in favor, let it be known by sign by. Uh -huh. All opposed, have any sign right? Hearing none, the motion has carried. Moving on 4.2. Economic Incentive Agreement, Innovative Construction Group. Michael Smith. Oh, yeah. Well, sir, state your name and your residence, please, sir. Uh, Michael Smith. My office is in Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, commissioners, um, we have a quick presentation to give on Innovative Construction Group. Um, very excited about this project. Um, and this, this is a company that's based in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, and they also look in two other uh, major metro areas. So it was exciting for us to win this project versus a, uh, a site in Arizona and a site in Texas. Um, it, it was it was competitive, um, as as most projects are. One of the things about about this project is since they're a, a national firm, they had lots of choices, and so we're certainly grateful that this is the location they've chosen. Next, um, so 157 new full time jobs, and um, in terms of their annual payroll, it's a little over eight million dollars. And the, the total investment is just under 40 million. And that's for their new, new facility that they'll be building on this site that we just discussed. Um, it'll be a 150,000 square foot facility. And it will be uh, kind of the northeast of where the camps or where the uh, Wolf Speed facility is that, that all of you know where. Um, we wanted to show you this because. It's, it, we have a, a very large and beautiful county, and just in case you don't know where the campsite is, we, we popped a, a nice uh, arrow on there to show it's right there, uh, uh, just west uh, of our downtown, and, and right on the uh, Randolph County line. So that's where the campsite is, where this is going, uh, very close to the Wolf Speed facility. Next. And this is more specific. Uh, in terms of exactly where that is. So you can see uh, Wolf Speed is on 450 acres. And, you know, when you ride on 64, you can see that Project Ice, you won't be able to see that from 64 because it's a little bit further north. Uh, but you can see one of the exciting things about this project, it continues the momentum that we have uh, here in the Sour City area. Uh, and and the, the biggest, certainly one of the biggest numbers that jumps off of that page is 1,350 acres that are still available uh, for future development and future business and investment. Um, this will bring a lot of benefits uh, here in Sour City uh, in terms of job creation, uh, increasing the tax base, um, and certainly economic uh, diversification and stimulus. And I think certainly with the, with the opportunities to, to build 
uh, new houses here. Um, this is a, a perfect company, a perfect fit, and, and a great time to have it here. Um, they're going to have uh, um, employ uh, local uh, folks here and make investments, and, and certainly uh, we'll be working very closely with Central Carolina Community College for training these new employees. Next. Um, and, you know, we, we have incentives to make our, our uh, locations competitive. Yeah. Um, you know, the other locations had incentives as well. Um, and this uh, North Carolina General Statute 157-7.1 um, is, is that specific statute that we use. Um, it, it was a competitive project. Um, and we are grateful that, that you all are considering these incentives. Uh, the business incentive grant that we're asking you uh, to look at is 80% of these new uh, taxes granted back to them over a five-year period. Um, and I think one of the important things about this is the company has to come here. They have to, have to hire these folks. They have to make this investment. They pay their taxes. And then we grant part of these taxes back to them over this five-year period. Um, We've got a lot of key partners. Um, every single project we have requires an entire room full of people uh, to make it happen. Uh, some of the partners are, are listed on here, including the Department of Commerce in Raleigh, uh, the Economic Development Partnership in Raleigh, uh, certainly the General Assembly, um, Chatham County, uh, you all, this board, Duke Energy, the North Carolina Department of Transportation, um, our development partners at SAMIT, um, Norfolk Southern Railroad was very helpful. Um, and as a matter of fact, Norfolk Southern has a, it's a prime rail site. So again, that helps us in marketing the rest of that site. Yes. Um, also the North Carolina Railroad Company and certainly the landowners. Um, I, I think we, um, uh, Tim Boris and D.H. Griffin have done a great job of holding on to this property for moments like this. I think that's very important. So uh, with that, I would ask for your support uh, of this, of, of the Solar City Grant Program uh, to support Project ICE. And what, what questions can I answer, Mr. Mayor? All right, boy, it's now down to, if you have any questions for Mr. Smith, I will start off with the fact that uh, we were in that area today for the 685 uh, unveiling uh, the sign for that corridor. It was exciting. This area is growing at a rapid speed. I mean, it's almost lightning fast how much is going on. As Mr. Smith mentioned, that is right there. They're going to need a railroad spur, which is also going to attract some other businesses. Uh, so whatever questions or concerns that you may have, uh, I ask that you voice uh, ask him at this time. This uh, proposal is just for Project ICE, correct? Yes. And not for other, other, other projects that are already there or maybe coming it's just for project just for this specific project i'm glad you asked that because we've been talking about this project we, we first learned about this it was literally 23 months <laughs> and most projects don't last that long so uh yes it's just just for this one project thank you do you guys know what they do first of all do you know what they what this company does so it makes housing um yeah basically there's a wall we all work uh, electrical, the plumbing, you build it, you take it to a, a site, you snap it together to another piece, and it's almost like putting a puzzle together, a puzzle house, for lack of a better term. I don't know what the real term is, and so that is uh, something that would also maybe be beneficial as we look down the road at affordable housing <laughs> made right here in our backyard. This is primarily for manufactured housing? Yes. Okay. Do you guys make like trusses and things like that for regular homes, or is it just specifically manufactured homes? I think both. Yeah, great because again, because of their connection with Pulte, and Pulte has a variety of, of different like housing that they build. Nice and commercial buildings. Also, I found out today that they also uh, manufacture commercial buildings. So, steel trusses too. Very cool. Anyone else? Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Mayor, yes. Yeah, you can open the public hearing, and then you can have discussion. Now that his presentation's over, now you can open the public hearing, and then close okay. it. Okay. We've done it both ways before, after, and before the presentation. But you're fine. 
Okay, can I get a motion to uh, open the public hearing? So moved. Second. second. The moving proper second that we open up the public hearing. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by sign of uh, All opposed have the same right. Hearing none. That the public hearing is now open, but no one signed up for the public hearing. So now you can turn around and close. Oh, yes. <laughs> It'll be close to the hearing. I said it. And moved it probably second. And we close the public hearing. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by a sign of a. All opposed have the same right. Oh. Hearing none, the public hearing is officially closed. And now uh, we need a motion to move forward with it. I just make one, I just want to make one comment about the property taxes. Um, would it be it should be good for the board and for the town if we push forward that the taxes are paid up front and we refund the money at the end of the year and the town is allowed to put it in a municipal bond so we can basically earn interest off of the free loan that we're giving and then we could refund it at the end of the year. Does anybody have any comments about that? What free loan are you speaking of? So like for year 2027 to 19,872, we're giving them like credit on their property taxes. What if we're allowed to hold on to some of that money for the year and then earn interest on like a municipal bond? We never received that money. No, we, uh, let me sure that. That. we, Chatham County collects and Chatham County remits it to us and uh, the previous two that we had, they both have their own set date of when they need to be paid by and in during that time period, we do put it into NCCMT. I don't really do earn interest on that? Yeah, we do. Oh, right now we're getting about 5.2% annually. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, the next, so this would also go on June 17th, that public hearing, is that correct? No, what um, what will happen tonight is that you can approve the um, incentive policy, and um, it becomes null and void in the event that the property does not annex into the campsite. So it'll be depending on the June 17th hearing. So they have to become annexed in order for this agreement to be valid. But there is a paragraph um, in the agreement. Michael, do you remember which paragraph? Well, yes, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that basically what it's stating on is uh, if they do not get annexed, this agreement is null and void. Right. Yes. Can we move that we we just had a public hearing, correct? Right. So okay. now you can I move that we approve the incentive agreement between the town and innovative construction group. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's been moved probably second that we approve the economic uh, development agreement with Innovative Construction Group. All in favor, of let it be known by sign of honor. All opposed have the same right. Hearing none, motion as Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, all business. That's it, discussion, and we are not, uh, this was a quick here. Today, basically, if you had any questions or concerns prior to Thursday, we did not intend to spend a lot of time with this, but if there's something that caught your attention that you wanted cleared up prior to Thursday, this was pretty much the time to do that. Well, what I look at, look at. Is it 5.30 Thursday? Excuse me. 5.30 Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there ain't none. I'm gonna move. No business. Oh, pool operation that is six point one pool operation hours. Um, Tyler, he's not here. He's uh he's in a class this today, okay. and he was hoping he would make it like in a moment's notice. So he might be a few minutes late. I ain't got a text from him either. So, um, I think he probably could handle. Any questions possible, we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, it's in your packet. I think, uh, Kim, we may have laid out a revised. They had 2023 there, I think, yeah. and it's now got 2024. Yeah. And so uh, they got broken into, what, three or four categories here. Um, you've got school day operations. I guess that's when school's still in between May 27th and June 11th. Monday through Friday that week, it'll be closed, but it'll be over on the weekends, 12 to 6. And then uh, that other school day operation period after... Um, Right before Labor Day, 
closed during the school days and up on the weekends. And then from June 12th to August 25th, 12 to 6, Monday through Sunday. Okay. And then we're, uh, the hours operations will still be available also during the holidays. That would be Memorial Day, Juneteenth, July 4th, and Labor Day. Is that pretty much it, what we understood? Yeah, and he also provided on page 16, 321 of your packet, the program and daily operation schedule to let you know kind of what's going on, swimming lessons or any type of different things that are going on. Um, in the packet, you'll notice that he had 23 mm -hmm. season. And so I fixed it and it's and the separate handout was 24. It was actually for the 24th season. So and we caught the error before it was noticed, so we didn't have to amend it. It's in the, the downloadable. It's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the packet, that's a good point. Schedule D, uh, eight, starting at 17, 18, or 21, he's got it broke down a little better. You can see what activities are happening each day. Yeah, um, boys and girls clubs, swimming lessons, public swim, full times. So you need a motion to approve the full operating hour? Yes. Okay, well, I'll make the motion to approve the full operating hour. So it's been moved. I'm going to second that the operating hours of our municipal pool be approved. I'll let it be known all about sign of I. Uh, uh, all opposed have the same right. Hearing none, motion carried. Thank you, sir. Manager's report. A really quick, Mayor, just a few highlights from uh, uh, since our last meeting. Me and the Mayor and the Chief of Police, we attended the Future I-685 sign and veiling today out on 421. It was right there at the uh, intersection, I guess, near Julian Airport Road. Uh, pretty impressive. We actually went by and uh, did a loop around the cul-de-sac at Toyota, so that was impressive. Um, something to think about, me and Commissioner Austin has been working on a uh, piece of property on 15th Street. Must have been a couple years ago, we put up a legal dump and a no dumping sign, no littering sign, and we're still getting dumping there. And uh, the, the, the legal dumping officer from the county stopped by and gave us some input. He found, he's found something, so I think he's going to try to pursue uh, who, who did the legal dumping. But I think our sign might need to be a little bit larger. It's, it's pretty small, but the no dumping is really, really, really small. So that might be something we want to uh, invest in. I just FYI there. Uh, and then meetings, county budget, public hearings tomorrow evening to, to uh, six o'clock here in the courtroom. Uh, our workshop is Thursday at uh, five thirty here. Memorial Day holiday is Monday, so we closed May twenty seventh. And our next town board meeting would be June third, uh, so Monday would be our first meeting of the month. So, and we may have another special meeting in between them, but that's my report, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, town attorney, may we hear from you, sir? I don't have anything other than I think discussion later. Okay. Uh, I do have one thing. I want to let everyone know that we're moving right along with the uh, memorial service for Mr. Larry Chi. Um, the plaque has been ordered. Um, the granite is there. He It's already there. So um, we're going to meet all the deadlines for that. Miss um, Norma Boone and myself uh, designed the invitations today and she helped me. Um, I know that's special to her heart. And I actually, I actually texted her and said, please help me. So she was really sweet. And so those were ordered today. We're gonna do 80 um, invitations and we're gonna give those to each of you or I'm um, gonna ask um, there's special people that y'all would like to invite besides the family to attend this. And we're also gonna run an ad in the newspaper. And uh, we wanna make it a pretty special special event for everyone. So we're looking forward to it. Is that June 22nd. June 22nd. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what time? We said 10.30? 10.30 a.m. So 30. we'll do, I'm thinking brunch yeah. and hors d'oeuvres yeah. um, style food. And, um, and I want to have special seating for the family yeah. and for all of y'all. Spread the word, guys. Spread the word. 6.27 at 10.30. 6.22. 6.22. But I'll send reminders. Yeah. All right, thank you. Ma'am? 1030. Yes, ma'am. All right, dude, we work on the old road. But what? Old road. Oh, they, yes, they're working on it now. Okay. Yeah, I've just got a report from Barnes and Rent today, and they're moving full speed ahead with a lot of stuff. 
and that happens to be one of them. So I look forward to seeing something different in our parks um, and surrounding area very soon. Governance comments. Um, let me let me do this because I'm getting calls, and one of the things that we have said as a board is transparency, but also. We have legal counsel that directs us uh, in that area, especially when it's concerning personnel. So I'm just going to make a brief introduction uh, and leave it at that. I'll be telling your friends so that they can slow down. Um, Jack Meadows is our interim town manager. Ms. Kimberly Pitcher is our assistant town manager, and uh, that's pretty much all we can give you. Uh, we love to be able to divulge everything. But there's an attorney sitting right over there, I never attended law school, and he tells us what we can and cannot do and matters concerning personnel. The caveat is these guys have done a phenomenal job. And I want them to know it, and I want you to know it. They worked late hours. They have not let up since they have been put uh, in these positions. And I think we owe them a round of applause. I do know they have my deepest appreciation. We are catching up. We are Stilling up, we are finishing up a lot of things. And these guys are working together. And I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate what you're doing. You stepped up to the plate when you need when we needed you. And you're doing a bang up job. And I couldn't this board couldn't ask for better. You just take There's no way. Because in we didn't know where we were going to get here, but once we got here, we figured out how to continue and move forward. Uh, Mr. McKay there with D.R. Horton, we called all the partners. I don't know that there was a problem. We could not divulge the problem. And so now publicly, I'm letting you know who's what, doing what, and whom to contact in the case of a need. So with that being said, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming out. I'm all, if the board has anything else to put out here. I do. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Jack, I, uh, I spoke to you last week about the, the water allocation issue that we have in the town. Um, the problem is we have very little amount of water that can be reallocated. I have finally got explicit statement from this lady, Vanessa, from DEQ stating that Old accounts cannot be restored. It's finally, there's finally just black and white. It's very clear. Before it was very amb ambiguous and I didn't know for sure. So I wanted to make, I wanted to make absolutely sure that was the case because it was very arbitrary what was decided. So what I think we could do and we should entertain it, talk to our constituents, see how our constituents have been affected by this is incorporate a lottery system that would allow the remaining 1200 gallons to be divvied out with a, basically an equal opportunity where you get your name drawn out of a hat. 1,200 gallons per day is not going to go very far, but it would at least show our constituents that we're trying to use something with what we have. And we can also clear the air that no accounts can be turned back on that were deactivated at 40 moratorium. This is something that needs clarity for our realtors who sell properties because there's a lot of speculation where customers are like, I don't know if I can turn it back on. And we also need an explicit statement from public utilities that they deactivate now, will they be able to reactivate in the future? Because the moratorium will end even with the mergers, how I understand it. Is that correct? Because the SOC doesn't end downstream, like I mean, you were looking at early 2027, late 2026. So we need an explicit statement from public utilities stating the latter. We need clarity for our realtors. And with the conversation and really for you guys that we need to discuss this with our constituents, do we think this is the best approach? Do, do we want to hoard a resource that's scarce and there's obviously market demand for try to help out maybe five or six individuals? 
Um, the estimation will be very easy. The administrative burden will be minimal. DEQ provides exactly how many gallons uh, to estimate based on type of structure, commercial versus residential, how many bedrooms. Residential is the easiest, 75 gallons of bedrooms. I think it can be done. Uh, I think we can send out a letter to all inactive accounts so we know that everybody's voices have been heard and maybe we give it a month, let them call back in, uh, let them email, call, get their name so that we can draw it and we can approach it in another month. I'm not necessarily trying to make a motion, but I'd like you guys to discuss with your constituents. If you think there's a better idea, I'd like to hear it. And I'd also like to hear what your constituents may have to say too. And that's all. All right, thank you. Any comments? No. Yes. DQ is a branch put together by the North Carolina legislative body. They regulate what a municipality can and cannot do. I read the email, you read the email. They said no. That's what they say. But there's 1,200 gallons that are remaining. There's 12 million. If they said no, that's the end of the conversation. It's actually not. They're yes, it is because what happens is what if you didn't tell you. We got one time to mess up, and they shut this whole water system down. So what happens to the remaining 1,200 if it's we just sit on so we just use a resource that people want. We don't, we're not able to divvy it up. What did she tell you? I read it. She told you no. I said no accounts can be turned on. That's right. That's what she said. But said. I also included the remaining 1,200. No, it did not. It just said don't it turn any accounts off. Didn't say anything about that. That was never explicitly your interpretation. That's my interpretation. And I'm trying to look out for the entire out. It's a meager amount of water. There's not going to be an infraction of any kind. How do you know that? Because 400 yeah. gallons is a drop in the bucket. We look at we, infiltration we, after we get rain. How did we get here out of the mission house? How did we, we get all this water? Pollutants in the water? Because, exactly. because the town's plant is enough at treating the way that they want it treated. It's inadequate. And it's yeah. outdated. Maybe. I'm not going to say it's an app, and you don't know that either. And no, it's just a person. It doesn't have the technology to treat the water that we want to treat it. There was contamination released into our water streams. Because the town's plant no, can't treat no, it. I'm not buying that, and that's not what happened, and I know better. That is not what happened. Okay. I disagree. Well, you have that right, but the bottom line is you don't know, and I don't know. The repercussions when a governing body tells you no and you decide I know more than they do. So where are the 1,200 gallons going to go? We're going to sit on them until the exactly. end of the mandatory. That's right. So we're going to have people who have nothing that they can use, not even a little drop in the bucket. I mean, let me ask you something. Let's, let's put it this way. If you decided that DEQ has no right None. What they tell us to do as far as water and wastewater. Let's use that premise. Okay. Is that good? It's illegal. Okay. How is that illegal? Well, it's not technically a law, it's a regulation. So I guess you could argue that it's not illegal. You'd be violating a regulation. But let's, I don't want to get into some. It's not an actual law. That is, the whole point is where Curtis, where Commissioner Brown worked and retired. If that was the case, we wouldn't even need a wastewater treatment plant at all. You just do what you want to do. But DEQ has explained to us what we should not and cannot do. So why are we continuing to go down this road? I don't understand how certain things are allowed to happen with, with businesses coming, like Jersey Mike's. Again, explain to me, how are they able to have their water turned on. Was that an existing tap? Can you, re can you enlighten me again, Chris? They were in the planning stage when all that went in. Explain it. What does that mean? They, they were in the, they had already turned in all the paperwork in the planning. So they, they met. The water count was already active. Yes. So, but it was already planned. Yeah. It was already planned. So are people not planning when they renovate their house to reactivate their account? That was just a water, that was just a, a residential water account that's just sitting there. When you choose to deactivate an account, that's your choice. So was that explicitly stated by public utilities that it couldn't be turned back on? Yes or no? 
Which does that matter? matter. So, Skip, regardless if the state backed you up on it, was it explicitly told to the customer? Could they turn it back on? Nobody's exactly. thinking that far downstream that I can't turn my water back. I mean, that's just not a rational train of thought. And people don't, people aren't thinking that way. I'm just, I, nobody would think, hey, I turned this up, we won't be able to turn it back on. I'm trying to develop a system, guys, to use what little we have. If we want to sit on it because we're petrified that we're going to get fined by DQ, that's fine. But this 1,200 gallons would, would be a penny on that flow station at the wastewater treatment plant. They would not know. It is such Right. Would you be willing to pay the fine out of your pocket? Depends on how much it is. Probably a couple million. You got you ready to pay it? Fine. A couple million. You don't know what it is. That's number two. Why? No, I assure you. You don't. Because my fact was what? Ten million? No. Anyway, the city of North. Um. Any laughs? That's a question. Yes. Uh, UNC School of Government and. NC League of Municipalities. If we want to place a course through either of those, um, is this an off? Do we need to have this conversation outside of a board meeting, or can you just enlighten me on what the process is for us to? Is that something we go through the town to do, or we have? Okay. I actually spoke with John about it, and what did we allocate? Uh, we accepted five hundred dollar for a commissioner, I think. Yeah, and so a lot of people... and historically that's not used, but he was sent in. Historically, it's not used. So that's not unique to Silo City. That's pretty good. Oh, I would use mine. <laughs> and um, and there's different. Um, when you get, do you have a UNC School of Government logins yet? Thanks. I emailed you about that over the weekend. I tried to log in to one of one of okay, the. that was the league. Yes, and oh, Curtis okay. is Curtis oh, finally right. got it. It's, yeah. a, it's quite the process. Yeah. So, but I will help you. You're with the friendly. user friendly. No, no, it's not. So anyhow, so the league is different than the UNC School of Government. You can take certain classes through the league, and then you can take some through the School of Government. They're both very, you know, very good. Um, and I can help you get a login. Or anybody, any of you that wants a UNC School of Government login, we can do that for you. But there is $500 each allocated to each of you for continuing education. All right. One more question. Yes. Sorry. Not to be critical, I'm just curious. Um, I read the email that went out earlier about the notice, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Is is or is that is that strategic or is there a reason why we wait until 48 hours or because this has been talked about before amongst past boards, right? Yes. Is that a decision that the board has made just to or is that your no, it's not mine, okay. um, but it's the statute. So what happened with the prior board, um, and we had talked about it with you all, is we were getting the agenda packets out on a Wednesday, but then you still have two business days left in the week. And a lot, and what all we've got going on right now in the town and business and um, different stuff we have to get on the agenda. If we get these out to you on a Wednesday, then you're going to have a lot of stuff in front of you on Monday night. And so I did... Um, Back in November, when I was at clerks training in Beaufort, um, uh, several of us clerks kind of were speaking about um, how they did packets. And pretty much everybody said, um, some most it was all Friday. Um, there was none earlier than a Friday. They were all Friday. Some were lunch. Some were about 3 p.m. Some were about 5 p.m. But it was all Fridays were pretty much. Okay. But And, and again, um, that is totally up to y'all. It's your agenda. It's your packet. Um, we just don't want to get into um, where we have so many things sitting in front of y'all on a Monday night, having to amend the agenda every single time. Because if you, the, my prior, my members from the, um, my prior board, you will remember you had stacks every night, yeah. every Monday night. So um, I don't like delivering packets Friday night. It's really, really late. <laughs> so we're hoping again with the new agenda software that we hope that y'all approve. And this upcoming budget that will help the directors um, get the information to the clerk a lot quicker and kind of help streamline the process. Yeah. Too. Um, how 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 long do you wait? Is there a cutoff time for accepting information for the agenda? It's going back to a cutoff, oh. <laughs> but some things we don't have a choice on. Um, okay. The certain things we have to get them to y'all as quickly as possible. Yeah. But we would like to get into the point where yes, I've got I like to be able to 
when it pops up online, I can download it mm -hmm. right on. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That'll be the new agenda software. It'll be amazing. Got my so. Mayor, I got just a quick one. Uh, Angle Street is that is that being done so now? So then another street is going to be closed. It hasn't come up. We don't know yet. We're still trying to get some easement stuff on the top corner. Okay. But will you get plenty of notice? Yes. Okay. Will anybody not be able to pull out of their driveway right there, Raleigh and Ingle? We're trying to work it where everybody will be able to get out. Okay. okay. Those will be the only, that's the tough ones, it's right there. Right. And one good note I've got, uh, we swore in a new detective today. Thank you, Chief. I don't know her name. Ah, there you go. Yeah, like Sydney Clark. Clark. She swore in today. She's promoted from an officer to a detective. Yeah. So the department is moving right along, mm -hmm. and I did meet her, and uh, so that's a positive note. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Jack, with public works and the, the road repaving, do, we do contract that work, right? We don't actually, pay, we don't resurface streets ourselves, do we? Yeah. I, I think that's correct. We uh, have okay. a contractor. John or Chris, do you all know about the, that contract? Yeah. Quick. On a, ma on a major scale, we would contract it out. Okay. So I visited Gail's property several weeks ago after that community meeting. And um, I brought this up before. The roads are getting paid really high. And the road runoff bypasses people's existing culverts. And it floods people's yards. So if, if we do an area where we do a lot of resurfacing again, I think we should strongly consider getting the road re-leveled and crowned as well properly. Uh, or even an incorporation of curves. That would be very expensive, but we may want to consider an infrastructure change. Um, is at least get the road at the right height, because when the road is higher than someone's yard, the culverts are completely uh, bypassed. And her yard, your, your brother's yard, totally floods. And it's because that water comes flying down your street, and we talked about this. That could be improved, though, if the roads are brought to the right height. So we want to, I don't know, next time we get roads repaid, can we try to get an estimate of what that might cost? Because it it's, it's a tremendous amount of work. Is there a street assessment report that was being worked on? Yes, it is. It should, I don't know where it is or what stage it is, but we he did tell us we worked on that. That work was being done. We need to try to dig that up and find check, out what it is. That. Yeah. Here, I'll check on that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's also happening too. The road quality is poor at the edges. It's crumbling because there's no there's no structural foundation. They're just they're just skim coating it. So like um, in my neighborhood, they just repaid six months ago on Dolphin, and the edges of the roads are already crumbling down in the, uh, the ditches. That could be corrected with implementation of um, a curb, possibly, but as well as getting that road flatter, it's more flush with the ground, not hanging off, because that's what's making it work. You know, you can maybe get a better product. I just don't know how much it would cost, and it'd be interesting to know what they would charge. Well, I'll look at that uh, study when it gets back here. Once we find it, it may be finished. I, I, I don't know, but I do know it was implemented. And I did ask about it a couple of months ago. In the course of the roads. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Check on that. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Well, again, I want to thank you guys for coming out and uh, attending this board meeting. I hope you, we will see you tomorrow night where the county will be here to discuss how they're going to spend our money. <laughs> and I hope that they have plans to spend it on us. And so again, on tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and then on Thursday at 5.30, you'll get to talk about how we spend the money that we have right here in Solid City on the citizens. And this is what's going on. <laughs> Yeah, y'all going to uh, in accordance with the North Carolina General Statute 143 318 11 A5. I'll make a motion we go into closed session. Second, it's been moved to the property second that we enter in the closed section. I'll let it be known by sign by. All right, let's have the same right.